Hi! Hello there! I am. Um, this is a new format that you've probably never seen me on before. If you've came straight from my blog or Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, this is the first video that's going live on my YouTube channel, which is scary. Um, I've never did this before. As some of you might know, I've produced, I've directed, <laughs> edited videos for a lot of other YouTubers. I really did my own before. So again, a lot of you have been asking, you wanted to see more content from me. So if you're new to YouTube and you've just discovered me, I like my blog down below if you want to read it and catch up on the last nearly six years of me vlogging. And I guess if you want to see more, then you can click that subscribe button and you can see more content from me and things that I'm trialing out as I'm trying this whole YouTube thing. The first video that I thought I wanted to make this year was going to be a roundup of 2017. Being a blogger, I get so many types of PR gifts, worked with so many different brands that I've loved. really have managed to get a feel this year of really good homegrown talent, whether it's Scottish brands that I've fallen in love with, whether it's British brands that I've fallen in love with, and even a collaboration that I had this year, which was really, really special. So I thought, why not do a round up of 2017 and the products that I loved? Here it is! Let's get going! I'm going to start off with fashion first of all. This year I found so many different fashion brands that I just fell in love with. Um, one of them being a handbag brand that a lot of you have kind of known that I've been kind of synonymous with a certain handbag brand that you see all the time on my Instagram. So this is a clutch bag by a gorgeous brand called VVA and VVA are a completely British brand, homegrown in Britain and run by a woman called Sarah and Sarah makes all her bags, she designs all her bags and she's pretty, pretty awesome. This bag, this tiny wee clutch bag, I'm saying tiny, it's actually quite big, um, has been my favourite bag that I've ever found. It's just, I, I'm a lover of leopard print, everybody knows that, I love anything leopard print and this is just the cutest little clutch bag. It's got like this really kind of cute pink lining and you can put tassels on the front, you can put pom-poms on the front, you can put a handle on it if you want. But I just like kind of just carrying it either like kind of under my arm or just in a kind of clutch style. I love it, this goes everywhere with me. If I'm not using it as a bag, it's going in my bag and I'm putting, you know, like makeup and bits and bobs in it. And yeah, that is my first favorite of the year. I'll say that VV as a whole is probably my favorite brand of the year. But yeah, this clutch, is my favourite thing. I'm going to talk about hair um, because hair care is something that a lot of people ask me about. I have really long hair, like all of this is all mine. And one brand that I've totally fallen in love with this year was a brand called Shea Moisture. This is, I believe, an American brand, or I think it's actually a Jamaican brand. Um, and it's for slightly kind of coarse, thick hair that needs a lot of moisture. And my hair is really, really, really thick. So I always feel like I need a lot more moisture than kind of like maybe like my mum does. I found this brand, this is the Jamaican Black Castor Oil Strengthen and Restore Shampoo. It looks like black tar. <laughs> it's not the nicest smelling thing in the world, but oh my god. This, like, I don't have any like, serum or anything or oil in my hair. It just makes my hair so shiny and so soft. But to go along with that, the mask and the other one is the conditioner. Now, these both kind of go hand in hand with each other. I use a mask weekly and I use the conditioner. These are actually just wet because I've just taken them out of the shower. <laughs> um, but I use the conditioner as almost kind of like a leave-in conditioner. It is a bit thick for that and sometimes it does make my hair greasy but it makes it so shiny the day after and I'm just in love with it. I think the combination of these three has been my hair care hero <laughs> set of 2017. Skincare. Now skincare is something that I'm a massive advocate for. I've just discovered so many skincare ranges in 2017 and I really kind of upped my game with skincare. I suffered with really bad acne when I was a teenager and I feel like not a lot of skincare used to work for me. I used to be kind of quite sensitive, my skin was a bit oily, dry, it was kind of all over the place. But this year I became an ambassador for a company called Magnetone. And Magnetone make these kind of face brushes with different attachments. So you can have ones for dry skin, sensitive skin, acne prone skin. The one that I like the most is this one. And this has like a kind of silicone, kind of silicone thing nubbies, but that's probably not the word I should be using. So yeah, it's kind of like, silicon. Uh, what I use it for is I use it to, if I'm using like a serum or a moisturiser, I'll just put the button on. It's actually run out of battery but it kind of vibrates which is a bit dodgy. But I use it on the kind of pulsating one 
and I just kind of like rub my moisturiser or my serum into, I'm going to turn it off because it's quite annoying, um, I like rub it into my face and use it for like my moisturiser or my serum or sometimes like if I'm using like quite a liquidy toner, I'll like rub it on and it really helps like get the product into my skin. It makes my skin look so soft and somehow it makes my skin look really really bright and glowy as well. So this, this is definitely a favourite and a really good discovery that I've just dropped. One of the other things that I loved skincare wise this year was discovering different cleansers that I've never used before. Now there's two cleansers that I've loved this year. One is from Eve Loam and the other one is from Sarah Chapman. <laughs> My dog's barking. This is great. The first one from Eve Loam is their Balm Cleanser, but it's in a gel and it's now in a pump. Now, if you're like me, I'm quite hygienic when it comes to things, so I don't really kind of like put my hands in a tub. Um, so it's got like a little pump on it, and it just comes out like a kind of kind of liquidy gel, and I really, really like it. It's the scent of it does put me off. I'm not a massive fan of the scent, but it just makes your skin feel so soft and so cleansed and it doesn't give you that really dry feeling that you get after you kind of cleanse your face. It's been a favourite, but <laughs> after I found that, I was introduced to this. Now this is a Sarah Chapman Rapid Radiance Cleanse. And this is like a kind of dual product. You can use this as a cleanser all over your face or you can rub it all into your face if you are like if you've not got any makeup on and leave it for like two to five minutes and it turns into a mask which I love. I use this before I go to an event and it makes my skin so glowy and it just I don't know what it does but it makes it so glowy and this has been an absolute favourite of mine. I've went through so many bottles of this in 2017 that I I need a lot more. One thing that I really wanted to do in 2017 was add more rose based products into my routine. Which is kind of funny because my middle name is actually Rose. Um, so <laughs> everyone, and it's not like, oh I'm doing it because I like Rose. No, I've seen a lot of people talk about how Rose helps like hydrate the skin and kind of rebalance the skin. So it was kind of my aim this year to add more kind of rose based products into my skin. Skincare regime. Um, <laughs> two products by Pixie. Um, one is the Rose Caviar Essence and the other one is the Rose Flash Balm. Both of these I discovered in December of this year, so it's kind of like a late favourites. God, they're amazing. They are actually the most brilliant products that I've ever found. This kind of caviar essence, it's got these kind of like little beads in it that burst when you put them all over your face. And just, they're like wee hydrating beads. They are just so amazing. So this I love. The Flash Balm kind of reminds me of Clarins, the rapid flash balm or something like that. Reminds me of that but it just it's almost kind of fills in like everything in your skin. It makes it look super glowy. It makes it look like, really quite flawless. I am never without this. This goes everywhere with me. I love it. Next rose based product is this from Neil's Yard. Now this is a toner but I don't really use it the way that a toner should be used. Um, normally you should take like a cotton pad, put toner on and then put it all over your face. I just tip this into my hand and just kind of like pat it into my face because I don't want to waste it on a cotton pad. That sounds so strange but I don't want to waste it on a cotton pad. So this I love, I absolutely love this. It smells, oh my god, it just smells like such a spa rose garden. It's just gorgeous and it just makes my skin super hydrated. I love it, it's almost like a kind of spa kind of feeling every time I, I do my skincare regime. I use it morning and night. And it really has calmed down the redness in my skin. I normally kind of have like red patches kind of like on my cheeks and on my forehead and it's totally calmed them down. And I've only been using this for a good couple of weeks and it's brilliant. It's absolutely amazing. A couple of bits of skincare that I've got are two from a brand called Mario Badescu and this serum from Manuka Doctor. Now this is the Manuka, I'll talk about this first. <laughs> this is the Manuka Doctor Drops of Crystal Serum. I discovered this on a whim. I was going to a ball just at the start of December and my skin was just dead. Like it was so dull, it was so dry and I was like I need something. I was like rattling through my skincare like drawers and I was like I don't have anything, I don't have anything. And my curling irons broke just before I was about to leave for the event. Well obviously before I was getting ready. My curling irons broke so I was like oh god damn it what did I do? So I went on to Amazon Prime to see if I could get um, curling irons because they deliver within an hour. And then this came up in my recommended items. Stupid from like 50 odd quid down to like 19 pounds. 
And I was like, ah, okay. You know, I'm ordering curling irons anyway, so I might as well get this. I have not stopped using this. It's been the best thing that I've put on my skin all year. I just love it. It's so nice. It does smell a bit like hairspray. I'm just gonna warn you. <laughs> it's not got the nicest scent in the world. Yeah, it does smell a bit like hairspray. <laughs> but it just makes my skin so hydrated, so glowy. As you can tell, I'm all about hydration. I'm all about glow. I'm all about making my skin look really, really glowy. And this is my favourite thing in the world. Um, totally an underrated product. Never really heard anybody talk about it. But I use it constantly. So the next, the last two skincare items that I have fallen in love with this year, one is still on the rose theme. This is from Mario Badescu and it's the facial spray with rose herbs and, with aloe herbs and rose water. I have the cucumber and green tea version of this as well. And I just love them. I just love the brand. I love Mario Badescu, one of my favorite brands. And it's really a brand that I want to try and see more products of in 2018. Like I'm going to try and use more of them. So. This brand is gorgeous. Again, rose water. It's really quite calming on the skin. It's really hydrating. The cucumber one that I've got is quite cooling on the skin. So I use that just before I go to bed so my skin's all nice and cool. Or I use this one just before I do my makeup so it's all nice and hydrated. I keep this in my bag sometimes as well because I love it so much. Um, but the next thing that I love, which I've just dropped, is the Mario Badescu Special Mask for Oily Skin. Now, I don't really have oily skin anymore. When I was about kind of 19, 20, my skin used to be really, really oily, especially around kind of like my T-zone. But this, I seen this and I went, oh, okay, I'll buy it, I'll see what it's like. It stinks, it smells like plaster scene, um, but it's like a kind of pink, I don't know if you can see that, it's like a kind of pink mask. And you put it all over your skin and it's it's not really anything like it's not going to draw anything out of your skin there's a lot of couple of masks that i'll probably do a video on like my top 10 favorite masks um because i use a lot of masks um <laughs> it's not going to like pull anything out of your skin but it just almost seems to just mattify everything so as much as i want a lot of glow in my skin it really does kind of mattify like my t-zone and kind of parts that when you like put highlighter on it's too shiny it really does and it's just like a wonder mask like it's one of the ones that I've totally fallen in love with and I can't stop using it and I think this is only like 14 pounds for a top that size and use the tiniest amount so it's fantastic I love it so my camera just died and I've just spent the last hour eating carrot cake charging my camera and watching Netflix I look a bit different and this whole setup's a wee bit different because I've moved. I'm sorry. I believe what I was talking about, where I was so rudely, and everything's just falling on the floor, where I was so rudely interrupted by my camera. I was talking about the Deep Sleep Pill Spray by This Works. Now, this, I am like the world's worst sleeper. That's not even an exaggeration. I probably go to bed about two o'clock in the morning and I wake up at six. And then that's pretty much me for the rest of the day. So I am, no joke, probably the world's worst sleeper. So when somebody told me about this, I was a bit nervous about it because it has a ingredient in it called patchouli. But it's like a, a flower called patchouli. And I'm allergic to it. And I thought I was going to hate this. But it turns out I don't. <laughs> I don't like... Probably shouldn't smell it because I'll probably fall asleep. I don't really like the smell of it. Because I do feel that the smell of it is really quite stinky. Um, but there's something about it that as soon as you smell it, if you kind of spray it, what I tend to do is I spray it on my pillow and then I open up my bedroom window probably about an hour before I go to bed. So I kind of spray my pillows with it, open up my bedroom window and let kind of the kind of top notes kind of go away <laughs> so it's not too strong. And then I go to my bed, I turn my pillows over. So like the side that I've sprayed it is on the bottom and shut my bedroom window. And that is just enough kind of scent for me to just kind of feel a wee bit snoozy, start to fall asleep. And I swear to God, I've now been getting a full eight hours sleep, which I never <laughs> used to get before. So yeah, I love this. This is for sure a favourite. We round up the whole skincare um, and move on to beauty products that I've loved this year. I'm going to talk about two fragrances that I've completely just, I've fallen in love with. As I said, I hate the smell of patchouli, which is a flower. And to me, it smells like cat's pee, <laughs> but that's a very specific scent. But to me, I, I can't stand it and I'm, I'm actually allergic to it. So, trying to find a fragrance that doesn't have it, because there's quite a lot of fragrances, I hate saying it, but it's quite a cheaply used product, so quite a lot of fragrances have it. It's really, really quite hard. 
One that I do like though is the Jo Malone Peony and Blush Suede. Now this, to me, oh god it just smells so good, it smells like when you first get a leather bag, like a really good leather designer bag and you smell it but it's like, it smells expensive, that's what I'm trying to say. So, so nice, like it was one that I never thought I was going to like. This is the Coach Blush, I think it's called, I think it's Blush. Um, yeah, never thought I was going to like this. Turned out, yeah, to be my favourite scent pretty much ever. I'm going to say it, it's my favourite scent ever. Um, one that I don't see a lot of people talking about or wearing, which is good because I hate having a perfume that everybody else like is wearing. I, I don't like that. But this is like really floral, kind of sharp floral and uh, yeah it's just, I can't describe it but it's just, it is absolutely gorgeous. It's my two fragrances. Now let's move on to so I don't really have many makeup products to show you. The one that I fell in love with was this contour palette from Marc Jacobs. Now this was a recent discovery towards the latter half of this year. It's really pretty. As you can probably tell my skin is quite yellow and I do wear fake tan so I'm not naturally this yellow but I am quite yellow. This is the undertones of my skin. I have very sallow skin so much so that my under eye bags purple I have a little kind of blue if I take all my makeup off you'll see like I have kind of like we kind of blue lines like at the side of my mouth so I do a lot of color correcting to make my face look one color so <laughs> I tend to be quite yellow and um, sometimes in some lights I actually look green so I'm not you know a Simpsons character I'm more than likely Shrek so <laughs> this is perfect for me the yellow powder I use I take a beauty blender which is in my bag and I just kind of rub the beauty blender on the, the yellow side and once I've finished my concealer before I go to powder or contour or anything like that I, I, I don't bake, I hate that kind of <laughs> baking kind of trend but I take my beauty blender and I just kind of pat the yellow powder into my under eyes I, I think it really does work, it adds like quite a lot of light to my under eyes which I really quite like um, as I said I have really quite dark set eyes and I have really sallow skin so it's always really really purple in here and it's always quite dark and I always like my eyes to look dark, like my actual eye look, because I look like I have no eyes if I don't do that. So yeah, this is really good. This side is, I mean I'm trying to just look at my own contour, it's a bit light for my skin to be honest. Um, this is in the shade Mirage, so I think this is like the second lightest. So I, when it comes to contour palettes I'm normally the darkest shade just because of my skin tone. Um, so this is probably a wee bit too light for me, but it is nice on days where I'm not, I don't actually really contour to be honest, I only contour like if I'm taking pictures or something just so, you know, I don't look like I have such a flat face. But this, this has helped so much, especially this side, if they just made like this on its own. I love is the Glossy Boy Brow. Now, I have this in the shade brown. I think it's too light for me, but I still love it that much anyway that I keep using it. It's really like a little kind of tiny, can you see that? It's like a little tiny wand. If you just see my dodgy fake tan, I am so sorry. <laughs> like, I had to like rush putting fake tan on because it's New Year's Day and I'm like, I was rushing to put fake tan on and I made a mistake, so I'm sorry. <laughs> but essentially like a tiny, tiny little wand and you just kind of like brush up the hairs on your brows and as I said, I think, I'm just kind of trying to rub it on my hand so you can see the colour. It's kind of like that colour, but I think that that is too light for me so I just use it really really quite sparingly. I don't normally use brow gel because I do have quite thick bushy brows. I don't normally use brow gel because it normally makes them quite hard and crispy but it just kind of makes them stand up and gives me that kind of, I'm not going to blow my own trumpet, but kind of supermodel brow kind of thing that I'm looking for. I don't do it great because I'm quite bad when it comes to my own makeup but I like my brows to look a bit bushy and kind of give some sort of frame to my face. This I really really like. The last two products that I like are two lipsticks from Charlotte Tilbury. Now Charlotte Tilbury on a whole was probably a 2017 rediscovery for me. The brand when it came out the first time round but they were quite expensive and I never really as I said before because I have really sallow skin it's really hard for me to find a makeup brand that I like that kind of deals with the issues that I have with my skin and with the colour of my skin. So I am predominantly yellow based 
So when I go into look at foundations, I don't want pink undertones. I don't want a colour that is red. I don't want it to look, because I will look like a tomato. It'll come off, I'll have like this huge big red line under my jaw. And it's like we're back in like start round foundation. We'll go with 2006. I don't like that line. So when Charlotte Silvery came out, I was a little bit kind of sceptical. I was like, mm, I don't know. Let's just kind of see if the hype dies down and then have a look. The hype has never died down. I've totally fallen in love with Charlotte Silvery. They seem to have a concept for products that really, really work for anybody of any skin tone. And just to make products that work for people with darker skin tones to people like me, who's kind of in the middle, and people with lighter skin tones. As I said, I struggle a lot with finding products. So when it comes to the lipsticks, I have this horrible vein when it comes to lipsticks that every single lipstick that I try goes purple. Doesn't matter what colour it is. Because I am so sallow skinned, I keep saying that, because I'm so sallow skinned, everything just looks purple. Oh. When I found these two lipsticks, now the first one is shade Very Victoria, which is, I believe, is based on Victoria Beckham. So it's kind of like that shade. I don't care a wee swatch. It's kind of like that. I don't know if you can see that. So yeah, it's quite dark. It looks really, really dark. But on me, it's pretty much my lips but better type colour. So if I was to take all my makeup off, this would probably be the colour that my lips would be under it. The shade after that that I wanted to talk about was a shade called Penelope Pink. Now again, I think this is actually based on Penelope Cruz, which makes more sense because I'm pretty much the kind of same colour of skin as her, so that would make sense. But yeah, this is like, I don't know if you can even see that, like the most gorgeous pink colour, but on me it looks like the perfect nude lipstick, which I was so excited when I found this, I was like, oh my god. This is amazing, it doesn't look purple. Absolutely fantastic. All the makeup, the skincare, hair care, all that done. I wanted to talk about a collaboration that I pretty much was in love with for the whole of 2017. So this was my candle that I designed with the candle company Daisy Blue Fragrance. I'm in love with this. I can't even hide how much I'm in love with this. I'm gonna go with this, which is, I've actually got one burning there. It's called Havana Rose. Now, as everyone will know, my name is Molly Rose. Um, so Havana Rose was something that I wanted to, if I was to have an alter ego, what would it be called? Um, and this is me just trying to be really cool and quite sexy. I'm not that kind of person at all. But I decided to go with this candle and this is called Havana Rose. And it smells like such a sexy, like, it's like a really sexy florally kind of smell, which I love. It's so perfect for winter. It's like a really sexy woody kind of smell and oh my god, I am just in love with it. It is, I have about four or five of these just burning in every room. Daisy Blue is a company that I just fell in love with in 2017. I have one of their candles in every single room in my house. I am just obsessed with them. Right, hold on, I'll show you. My favourite scents from them is a scent called Lime and Ginger. It is stunning. It's absolutely stunning. And if you've seen my Instagram over the last year, you'll know how obsessed that I've been with them. I am just so obsessed with them. Um, but yeah, this is the smell Lime and Ginger. I have another one called Violet. Um, there's another one called Plum and Rhubarb. And I can't remember what other ones I've got, but I have so many of them just littered throughout my house. Um, and they give off such a really nice scent. It's not like really like, bam, so powerful, migraine city, no. It's like a really soft, kind of warming kind of scent that you get from them. Even like the fresh ones, like the lemon ginger ones normally in the kitchen, because it's quite fresh. And it gives such like a really warm and homely smell to it. It just makes everything just smell stunning. And it lasts, like even though when you blow out the candle, you can still smell it. And that's why I think it makes a good candle. If you can still smell it once you've blown out the candle, it's a good candle. Link down to this below if you've got it. And if you want to pick up one, not pressuring you, but if you want to pick up one, these are limited edition. They were limited edition for Christmas. We've got a couple left over. So if you want to get them, I'd snap them up pretty quick. So the last things that I want to talk about is a couple of books that I've been loving for 2017. Now I read on average about four books a week and I am just, I can't stop reading. I'm one of these people that I'm always on the go and I find it really hard to read blogs, watch YouTube, like look on Instagram and things like that that normal people would do in their downtime. 
I find it hard to do that in my downtime because I feel like I'm still working. So I always have to do something completely aside from what I'm doing <laughs> or watch something on YouTube that's like architecture builds or puppies or something <laughs> that's like absolutely irrelevant to what I do for a living. So I read so much and <laughs> there's a couple of books that I thought were really really good that I've discovered that's kind of helped me along my journey of being a businesswoman, kind of growing up, living in a more kind of professional society and professional setting. Um, and there's one which is completely, literally out of this world, no pun intended, but totally pun intended because I'm that kind of person. I'll bet this one first. So this one is Artemis, which I am, um, I'm actually rereading this because I, I read this, I was actually in hospital towards the kind of latter end of the year and I read it, but now I kind of forget bits, so I'm kind of going back and rereading it. Um, but yeah, this book is so well written. I didn't actually want to read this because it was written by the guy who wrote The Martian. So I'm saying the guy, it's called Andy Weir. Um, and it's written by the guy that wrote The Martian. Now, I didn't like The Martian. I don't particularly like Matt Damon. Um, so I don't really like, I didn't like the book. I didn't like the film. I don't like Matt Damon. I was really like, mm, why would I read this? But somebody actually recommended this to me. And I don't like sci-fi. I hate sci-fi freaks me out. <laughs> like, and like, if I'm going to read a book, it's either going to be fiction, as in so fictitious that it's like a dream romance kind of novel, or it's like super fact. It's a biography. It's a book about Stephen Hawking. You know, I I read that kind of stuff. I'm that loser. So this is a book called Artemis, and it's about. I'm not going to spoil it, but it's about a girl who essentially they have a city on the moon. This sounds so childish when I read it out, but it's so well written that you can't put it down. And it sounds like such a childish concept that, you know, like nine year old me would love. But this, it's just, it's one of the books that you just can't put down. So it's about a girl who lives on the moon and she's kind of like a bit of a renegade and she gets herself into a lot of trouble. She finds this project that's going to make her up a lot of money. And essentially the guy who was supposed to pay her dies and is murdered and she's trying to find out what's going on. So I'm not gonna like tell you what happens in the end, but this came into my life at such a good point because I was so stressed out. I was like, as I said, I ended up in hospital. I was so stressed out. I had to just take time out at the end of the year and I just, I fell in love with this so much that I'm now rereading it because I love it so much. Last two books that I loved this year. Well, it's a black book and we should all be feminists. Now I'm gonna go on the whole Feminist rant, that's not the next thing. Feminism is a word that I don't personally like. I actually quite like equality more than I suppose to feminism, but it is a word that is kind of synonymous with female empowerment at the moment. So I have kind of been on a journey through the whole last year, developing myself as a businesswoman and as a professional, and also <laughs> developing my own businesses. Now, I currently at the moment have three businesses that I run they're doing quite well, I'm quite happy with them, but these two kind of came into my life and helped change how my perception of the world was. This is just the start of female empowerment and activism in an environmentally friendly way. I mean like, you know, go and hug trees. I mean like in a way that doesn't have so much fallout that causes offence and causes other people to hate the cause as opposed to siding with them. I hate the word feminism. For two reasons. One reason, I don't think it should just be settled to women. Um, I think that, you know, equality is a better word. Um, if equalityism was a word, then it should be used for that. Um, but I don't think that the problems in this world are problems that only affect women. I believe that, you know, there's problems that affect, you know, racial issues or sexual issues or anything that I feel like it's not just a gender specific issue which is kind of a weird reason why I like this and it was something that I did I liked because it was more just kind of a, it's a little pocketbook you can read it in about I don't know half an hour and it was something that I liked reading because it made me feel like if someone was to write something that I would particularly write about it would be that a world where men and women, regardless of, you know, sex or <laughs> gender or um, racial issues or, you know, sexual orientation or even gender orientation can live in a world of harmony. 
and that not, isn't necessarily something that's happening right now. I feel like there's a lot of... I'm trying to put this in such a politically correct way. Um, I feel like there is a lot of hate towards someone who might be deemed as different or someone who is standing up for something that they believe in. And there's a lot of eye rolling going on <laughs> which shouldn't be happening. So I feel like this was a book that really, really helped me kind of discover who I was as a person and where I stood on an issue that I do quite believe in. Um, so much so that I launched a charity towards the end of the year to help women and men and anyone who has been affected by a specific issue, help them find their place in the workplace, whether that's building their own business or whether that's finding their own place in their own workplace that they can feel comfortable and they can feel professional in a setting that isn't normally accommodating towards them. So yeah, that's something that I'd probably touch on a later video. I think that's kind of a bit dark for my first ever video on YouTube. Um, but I love this so much and it was such a book that I've read over and over and over again so much that, you know, I've went through it and I've made notes in it. I, you know, I've, I just love it so much. And this one, The Little Black Book, which is a toolkit for working women, it's not... It's not something that, you know, my mum could have probably have told me half the things that are in this book. And she did, <laughs> you know, she pretty much told me how to deal with myself in business. These two books, if you're feeling lost in a world that you feel like you don't fit in, these two books kind of gave me hope. And that is the note I think I'm going to end this video on. Um, it's on a note of... Again, I feel like there are so many places in this world and there's so many different creative outlets that we can all go through and this is my first kind of look into, into this one. As I said, I've always been behind the camera, I've never actually been in front of it. So for me, using this creative outlet is, is nerve-wracking but exciting for me and I don't feel scared at it, I don't feel scared of taking on a new challenge. So. I think that is what I'm going to end this video on. Um, if you like my content and if you like this video and would like to see some more content from me, I would really, really appreciate it if you put a comment down below and said what you'd like to see from me. Do you like me talking about things like feminism, which a lot of people know I talk about that quite a lot. <laughs> I'm quite opinionated on that. Um, do you like me talking about things like that? Do you like me talking about more kind of businessy things? Do you like me talking about you know, skincare, hair care, all that, or do you just want a huge big mishmash of everything together? Yeah, I mean, I think for our first video, I did not too bad. So I'm going to leave this here and I'm going to say goodbye for now. And yeah, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is nuts, but welcome. And I really, really hope to see more of you soon. So enjoy the first day of 2018. Let's see where this year takes us, especially let's see where this year takes this channel. So see you later. Bye.